kids, it's time for books. So cuddle up to mum or dad and let's rock and read. Today, I'll be reading you The Seesaw. Stay tuned to the very end to see if Sophia can find her beloved bear again. Let's read. Sophia's bear was old, tatty and very well loved. It had belonged to Sophia's grandfather, then to her mother, and from the day Sophia was born, the bear had kept her company too. He was less like a toy and more like a friend. Sophia and her bear enjoyed picnics in the park, long walks through the woods, and one day, they even went to the seaside. It was a very long journey. Sophia and her father had to catch a train, a boat, and then finally a bus. But it was worth it. The beach was amazing. Sophia even took off her bear's scarf so they could splash in the waves. Her father bought fish and chips and they all had ice cream for pudding. It really was the most perfect day until the storm clouds rolled in. Thunder clapped and lightning flashed. Raindrops pounded down onto the sand as they packed everything up and rushed for the last bus home. They were in such a hurry that neither of them noticed a bag fall open and Sophia's bear tumble out. After the storm had blown over, the bear sat alone on the wide empty beach and nobody saw but the sea. After a while, a seagull flew down and pecked curiously at the bear. The sea saw this and did not like it one bit. The sea knew how sad the girl would be to have lost her bear, and so it decided to help. As it took hold of the battered bear, it almost seemed to whisper, I will take you home. Of course, when Sophia realised that her bear was missing, she was terribly upset. She looked everywhere, but he was nowhere to be seen. Her father telephoned the bus company and the train company and the boat company, but nobody had found a tatty old bear. As soon as they could, they returned to the beach, but there was no bear there. Sophia's father gave her other toys to try and replace the bear she had lost, but none of them were right. None of them belonged to her mother. All that Sophia had left now was the bear's small scarf. She snipped a piece off, placed it in her locket for safekeeping and tried to carry on as best as she could. But it was just so hard. Now, it's incredibly difficult to return something when you have no idea who the owner is or where they live. But even so, the sea tried. It washed the bear along through the water, helped by shoals of shimmering fish, a whale, a dolphin, and even an octopus. The bear hitched a lift on a boat and he was carried along by a seal the sea always found a way to guide the bear through the water. But it was not an easy journey. When the wind grew cross, whipping the water into towering waves, the sea carried the bear to safety. When the waters grew too cold, the sea would wash the bear onto land. And then with spring, the journey would begin again. The sea became concerned. It was all taking so long. It carried the bear to every beach and every dock and every harbour too. 
but with no luck. And so the search went on, beyond the oceans, into lakes and along rivers. Which was how the bear came to be gently drifting down a stream one sunny afternoon. A young girl saw the bear floating in the shallow waters and went to investigate. Curious, she picked it up and called out to her grandmother to tell her all about this exciting new find. Slowly, the old lady walked out of the house. Then she stopped. She stared silently for a moment, then rushed forwards to scoop up the bear. The grandmother's the girl who lost the bear. Sophia hugged her bear close. For the first time in many, many years. You see, nothing is ever truly lost if you keep it in your heart. The next day, they returned to the beach Sophia had visited all those years ago. She stood on the warm sand looking far out to sea. Then she smiled and the sea saw. Thank you so much for joining me to read tonight. I hope you have a great night and if you'd like to see my next book, remind mum and dad to subscribe. See you next time.